up and fires a shot into the shins of Daniel Tarnquist. Only Eric Brewer has played more in this tournament than Steve Steyos. He's logged a lot of ice time. Zetterberg now, along with Axelson, who winds up and fires a shot right on the wall. Those forced to make yet another save here in OT. Most of the chances have been down this end of the ring. Look at Zetterberg dancing free. Now it's Axelson. Axelson getting into position, gives it a Zetterberg. Almost stepped around Brewer, but he cut off the angle. Here he comes again. Zetterberg can't get a good shot away. Tireless work there by Eric Brewer on an even more tireless Henrik Zetterberg. Now here's Canada coming back. Far side looking for Murphy. Draper will follow up on the play. Here's Draper with it. Back to Rebe. He'll wind up. His shot doesn't reach there. Off the stick into the air and Sweden will clear it. Here comes Janssen now. Team Sweden's captain makes a move. Janssen waiting for the trailer. He gets it to Tarquist, turns and fires, and that's casually steered aside by Luongo. Nordstrom keeps it deep. Janssen now comes out of the corner with it. Moves into the middle, tries to set up someone at the point. He does, and it's fished ahead by Rodin. Now back of the net is Nordstrom. He's wrapped up by Rebe. Brewer almost loses it in front of his net, but that's clear. You can tell legs are getting a little rubbery out there. It's been a long tournament, a long game, and it's a big ice surface. A lot of skating with four on four. These guys are going to be dog tired, and I know it may be cliche, but it's too bad. Only one team can win this one. Here's Danny Heatley on the line. Heatley trying to move in, and he has his pocket picked by Forsberg, who's got it back coming the other way. Down the right wing, Forsberg slows up, feeds it in front, trying to find Matt Sundin. Here's Sundin now, circling around, gets it back down low where Forsberg's waiting for it. Forsberg and Sundin playing together. They haven't been doing much of that. Here's Sundin back in the net. Looking for the centering pass, being watched by Stales. Sundin, right in front, stopped by Luongo. It's scary, though, for Canada. I'm sure Andy Murray, when he saw that Sundin was coming out there with Forsberg, that's a tough duo to defend against. You've got two young guys in Briere and Heatley out there playing against these two old Wiley veterans. And they're big and they're strong. Two great possession players, too, in this side right there. As Canada couldn't get it away from them. They had a little game of keep away going on. Here's Eric Brewer, back of his own net. Makes the first pass to Bowmeister. That angle was cut off immediately, so they're right back where they started from. 13-40, gone. Still no winner, but here comes Anson Carter on the line. Fires a shot, Telkris makes the save. He's got the wraparound! It's in the net! Canada has won! They're gonna look at this, the light has not got on. Canada has left the bench, and we've got a review. Well, Canada, <laughs> they were celebrating so quickly but the Swedes still thought they had a chance, but that puck's in. That puck is in. There was never a signal except for the Canadian players pouring off the bench. Here it is. You can't see it there. But from that first angle, you could tell by the positioning. I am certain that from that first replay that that puck was in. I think everything here is inconclusive, except maybe this one. Oh my. I think that's over the oh goal line. My. I would have I think to that's say, the one. I would think that would tell you just that, that angle there, the overhead. As Telquist was just a second, a fraction of a second, late getting in a position. You don't see it there. I don't know, Greener. We may still be playing hockey here. The referee. Sindler is the whole puck across the line. It may be inconclusive from all of the angles that they've got. And if it's inconclusive, then you're going to have to go back and do it again. As if this game needed any more drama, we await the decision. Just, just from that position, though, I think that puck is in because 
it was underneath of the pad, and the pad 